Hello, I'm Derwood Center. I'm pleased to be here today to help celebrate the 100 year anniversary of the Glen Echo Park Carousel and Band Organ. I've maintained the organ here for about 50 years and I'd like to talk a little about the organ and what's been done to it over that time. When the amusement park closed in uh, 1968, the uh, rides were all sold off and that included the uh, carousel and the band organ. These items were purchased by Mr. Jim Wells over in Fairfax, Virginia. He was a dealer in vintage amusements and uh, band organs and self-playing musical instruments. When I uh, first came to the park, uh, in 1971, the grounds had just been taken over by the National Park Service, and uh, things were still pretty dilapidated at that point from years of deferred maintenance by the amusement park and general abandonment. The crystal pool was still here, but with no water. The Spanish ballroom was intact. The uh, Dodgem car, the bumper car pavilion was derelict, and the uh, arcade buildings were missing part of the roof. However, the organ and the carousel were still here, they were still in operation, and even then they were a sight to behold. When uh, the amusement park first bought the carousel in 1921, they bought with it a Wurlitzer style 153 band organ for the music. Wurlitzer was the leader in America of band organ and automatic musical instrument manufacture and their style 153 was considered a medium size organ. I'm sure the park owners quickly realized that uh, a 153 organ was not nearly large enough to fill a room this size with sound. So the very next year, 1922, they upgraded and bought a Wurlitzer style 157 band organ. Uh, that's a much larger instrument and much more musically capable. That organ remained here about four years and the park decided to upgrade once again in 1926. They bought a Wurlitzer style 165 duplex orchestral organ. And that's the one that has remained here since that time and is sitting right behind me. Duplex orchestral organ. Uh, that organ has 168 pipes uh, and percussions including a bass drum and a cymbal a uh, snare drum, triangle, castanets, a crash cymbal, and a set of orchestra bells. So pipe organs and band organs share a similarity. The sound is produced by wind-blown organ pipes. Of course, in a, a pipe organ in a ch church, the pipes are controlled by uh, organists playing on a keyboard. Um, band organ, however, is entirely automatic. Uh, there, the pipe works are controlled by a perforated paper roll, much like that found in a more common player piano. For this organ, the style 165 has made, the paper roll had 69 tracks or keys. And of those 69 keys, 52 of them were devoted to musical notes, the rest for percussion and uh, other functions of the organ. Of the 52 notes, they were arranged in four sections, a bass section with six notes, an accompaniment section with 10 notes, melody section had 22, and the trumpet section had uh, 14. Now these sections were not chromatic, meaning that on a musical scale, there were certain notes on the scale that the organ did not have. Organ companies did this in most organs except for the very largest ones in order to conserve space within the case. So uh, we'll talk a little more about rolls in a few minutes. So when I first came here, the uh, organ was playing fairly well. Uh, the tuning was somewhat less. And uh, early on, I offered to volunteer my time in order to keep the organ as playing as well as possible for its condition and as well in tune. I don't know who worked on the organ over the years. Um, possibly Jim Wells might have sent a mechanic over to do some maintenance in the 60s. I found that the uh, vacuum bellows and the pressure bellows had been re-leathered certainly more than once over the years. The pneumatic stack had its valve blocks replaced with modern replacements. And in general, the uh, type of work done was typical that could be found in the 50s and 60s on organs in amusement parks and carnivals. 
the uh, organs at that time were just considered another piece of park equipment and had to be kept in operation as much as possible with little concern for historical accuracy. So um, I quickly realized that the organ was not playing its original music role. I learned that uh, the organ had been converted by Wurlitzer in 1934 to play a Caliola type role. A Caliola role is a type of role that Wurlitzer made for a variety of their musical instruments in the late 20s and early 30s. The Caliola roll plays 65 notes and it's fully chromatic. So a conversion uh, of a 165 is not a simple matter. A lot of pipes had to be replaced, a number of internal components had to be modified or replaced, and some components were entirely eliminated, such as the uh, castanet action and the triangle action, because the Caliola roll had no provision to play those. The uh, reasons for converting uh, were probable, most likely because the uh, Caliola rolls were then available in a greater selection of popular music, which would be important for a, an amusement park. And the cost per roll was considerably less for a Caliola roll versus a 165 roll. So this work was done at the factory in 34, and the organ came back and played through the mid-70s using the Caliola roll system. It played uh, quite well, but uh, of course uh, it did not utilize the 165 organ to its fullest capability. By the mid-70s, uh, it was apparent that the organ was beginning to have problems and was going to need a restoration, uh, major restoration in the near future. The leather, rubber, and fabric components had started to deteriorate and the mechanical parts had a lot of wear and were becoming unreliable. So uh, in 1974, I entered into conversations with the park about doing a restoration and converting the organ back to play 165 rolls. There were several arguments for this. Uh, firstly, uh, historical accuracy. Uh, with the organ playing 165 rolls, it would once again sound and operate like it did when it was new. Secondly, there was concern over the availability of the Caliola rolls. They were still being produced at that point in time by uh, Ralph Tussing. He was up in North Tonawanda, New York. Ralph had acquired one of the Wurlitzer perforators when Wurlitzer went out of business and was making a variety of band organ rolls in limited numbers. But he was uh, nearing retirement and the future availability of the Caliola rolls was in question. But most importantly, new 165 rolls were again being made company in California called Playwright Music Roll Company specialized in reproducing vintage music rolls for the newly developing collector's market. So uh, with uh, these three facts in mind, uh, the park agreed uh, to have me restore and convert the organ back. And in 1978, I dismantled the organ and moved it to my shop in Baltimore for, to, uh, to begin restoration. So the first thing to do as I dismantled the organ was to make an inventory of exactly what needed to be uh, replaced, remade, or uh, remodeled. Uh, it was apparent that uh, nine pipes had been replaced, the transfer block replaced, the um, number of internal components, including the lock and cancel unit that controls which pipes play, had been eliminated in favor of a smaller one for the Caliola roll. And some items, uh, as I said, were eliminated, uh, had to be remade like the castanets, the castanet action, the triangle, the triangle action, uh, the crash symbol and its action, and uh, a few other internal components that uh, control the pipe work. So once this was done, I could then uh, have the case emptied out and turn it upside down to gain access to the bottom pipes. Most band organs have their base pipes in the bottom. Uh, no space was uh, left unused. And in the 165 organ, there were base pipes and accompaniment pipes. This next picture shows uh, a view of the bottom pipes uh, as I found them. So four of these pipes uh, were replaced during the 1934 conversion. So 
so they had to be removed and new pipes made of the proper design and pitch. The second photo shows the new pipes. Uh, they're the ones with, in a lighter yellow color. Once this was done, uh, pipe work in the top of the organ that required replacement was the lowest trumpet pipe, the lowest baritone pipe, the lowest viol pipe, and two trombones that required modification to go back to their correct pitch. And once the pipe work was done, I could then make the other missing components, such as the uh, lock and cancel unit, and uh, extend the transfer block and make the missing percussion actions, such as the, uh, as I said, the castanet triangle and crash cymbal. So finally, uh, that work was done, the, uh, the conversion. So I can then begin the uh, normal pneumatic restoration of the organ. I began with the vacuum pump to re-leather that. The pneumatic stack was, had its stack pneumatics re-leathered and the valve blocks rebuilt with traditional materials and components. The wind chest had its pallet valves re-leathered. The roll frames all came apart for complete degreasing and uh, any worn gears or bearings were replaced and then all of the, those components were re-nickel plated. The crankshaft came out. The, uh, Connecting rods were replaced and the main crankshaft journal bearings replaced. A new drive unit was built with a new electric motor and counter shaft. And uh, the only thing that wasn't done at this time was the pressure pump. The pressure pump had been recovered earlier by somebody. It wasn't too neat, but it still functioned quite well. And since that item's a uh, pretty hefty cost in itself, the park agreed to put that off to a future time, which was fine. And uh, also while the case was emptied, the, uh, uh, it was sent out for refinishing. All the loose veneer was repaired and uh, every, all the joints stabilized. So when it came back, I was ready to start assembling the organ. Uh, all the components went back in, all the pipe work went back in, all cleaned with their stoppers re-leathered. And finally, I could fire it up and uh, then proceed to regulate the action and regulate the pipe work and tune it, uh, install the percussions and get those regulated so that it was finally making music again. At the end of 78, it was time to bring the organ back to the park and uh, put it back where it had always been as it sits behind me. So in 1978, the organ once again played at Glen Echo Park and played its original music for the first time since 1934. And it's played and sounded as it did when it first arrived here in 1926. A very proud moment. Now I think we'll go around to the back side and uh, continue the talk. Uh, we'll have a brief musical interlude while I move around to the back. Uh, here's a picture uh, showing the organ chassis without the facade on. Also, uh, the selection that we'll be playing is uh, Sousa March, the U.S. Field Ar Artillery March. Uh, this is significant to me because it's the first song I remember hearing in 1971. It was being played on a Caliola roll, but it is this music. So I'll see you in just a minute.
Okay. Here we are at the back of the organ. I've removed the panel so that you can see the different components. The organ is running right now with the music uh, disengaged. You can see the drive unit, uh, which turns the large pulley. That turns the crankshaft in the organ, which is, uses the connecting rods to uh, pump the air into the organ. The vacuum pump is in the top, and the pressure pump is in the bottom. Now the other components, uh, the, again the pressure pump, we have the wind chest, uh, the organ pipes sit on the wind chest. This unit is the pneumatic stack. We have the roll frames, all the organ pipes are behind this area facing front, the vacuum pump in the top, and of course as I said the crankshaft is over in this part. Uh, the two roll frames, uh, this organ has the Wurlitzer duplex system. On a band organ with a single roll frame, uh, once the music plays, the roll has to rewind. On a carousel, silence is deadly. So uh, during rewind, the organ is silent. Wurlitzer uh, and other companies develop the duplex system so that one roll can play while the other rewinds, thereby giving the kitties continuous music. Now these organs are designed so that uh, most of the components can come out the back for service or repair. In uh, 1994, the leather on the pressure pump finally gave out and uh, had to take that out and recover it. In 2006, the leather on the pallet valves of the wind chest gave out. Unfortunately, that's the only component in the organ that can't be removed without complete disassembly of the instrument. So for the second time, the organ had to come out and go to my shop in Baltimore, be dismantled, and uh, allow me to redo the, uh, the wind chest. I took advantage of that time to give the pipe work a thorough cleaning and the rest of the organ. Uh, I rebuilt the orchestra bell unit at that time and uh, replaced a few other parts that were beginning to wear. So in 2017, that work was done and we moved the organ back down to the park and back in place so the organ was ready for the summer season. Now the organ had uh, one major catastrophe since I've been here. In 1989, the crankshaft broke. Uh, that effectively killed the organ. So what are you going to do? You can't exactly call Wurlitzer and order a replacement crankshaft for a 165 organ. They had been out of business for years. So I got on the phone and started making phone calls and ended up talking to Jim Wells again over in Virginia. Uh, Jim, turns out, had an original casting pattern from Wurlitzer for the 165 crankshaft. And he had made, had blanks cast from this pattern and they were available, so great. I bought one of these blanks and had it machined to specification, put it back in the organ seemed to work fine and I thought we were home free. Well, we were for 10 years, but in 1999 the same crankshaft broke again. I learned at that point that the alloy used for that blank casting was magnesium bronze, a strong material but uh, perhaps not the best alloy for this application. So I talked with Jim. I was able to borrow the casting pattern and have a new one made in cast iron had that machine and put back in the organ and that's been running just fine ever since. Long may it last. Uh, incidentally, uh, in later years I was able to acquire that casting pattern and I've since donated it to the park. So if a problem should ever arise, uh, we'll be one step ahead of the game. Let's hope we don't need that. I come down about twice a year to tune the organ. As you may know, uh, Organ pipes are temperature sensitive for tuning, and the temperature in the carousel building can vary from 60 degrees in the springtime to uh, over 100 in the summertime, and as little as a 5 degree difference can make a noticeable difference in tuning. So I uh, retune it for the season and uh, try to reach a happy medium for the, for the entire playing season. I'm only about an hour away, so if any problems do arise, I, I can usually get here in the next day or so and take care of it. I moved the organ one-third time since I've been here, and uh, that was in 2019. The uh, organ house 
in which the organ sits had some major, major structural problems and required complete replacement. So I dismantled the organ and it went into storage in a warehouse of a local fine arts moving and storage company. And uh, when the work on the organ house was completed in 2017, I mean, I'm sorry, in 2020, the organ was brought back and reinstalled here in hopes of operating for the 2020 summer season. But as you know, the COVID pandemic put an end to that. So. Uh, the organ remained here, and uh, by the time you watch this video, we'll have been playing for the 2021 season. I should also mention about the facade restoration. Uh, several years ago, the facade was restored by Rosa Patton. Rosa is one of the finest artists in the country for carousel paint restoration and organ facade restoration. She very carefully scrapes down through the many layers of accumulated paint down to the original scenery. She in paints, restores the original scenery and then determines the color and design of the rest of the facade and uh, completely uh, repaints the, the decoration and it becomes a true work of art. Here's a photograph showing the uh, finished facade. Uh, it's, it's truly a, a magnificent piece. Thank you, Rosa. That's about all I have for the moment. Uh, I think we're going to switch over to the live question and answer session now. I'm proud to have been here for the last 50 years and taken care of this organ. I hope that whoever takes over after me will have as much appreciation of it as I. Thank you for tuning in.